that's a good, uh, good start. Um, welcome everybody, I'm Mayor David Narkowitz. I want to first start by thanking all of you for uh, your willingness to serve on this new, newly created Mayor's Economic Development Advisory Commission. Um, what I thought I would do is uh, have you go around the room and we'll just introduce each other uh, and, uh, and then move on from there. So, do you want to start? I and, if you, and if you could just <laughs> also um, you know, give a little thumbnail sketch of what you do and, and, and your background, et cetera, sure. that would be great. Yeah. Okay. My name is Marlene Morocco. I'm currently the Vice President of Global Sales for a software, international software company here in town. Um, prior to this, I've been here for about three years, and prior to this, I was the Director of Economic Development for Greenfield. So I did that for about four and a half years and brought about fifteen and a half million dollars worth of new tax revenue into Greenfield. So and now I'm back here, back, back to corporate. When, when Mayor Forge left, I left with her. <laughs> and then uh, right back to corporate, and now I'm here. I'm Joe Blumenthal, uh, owner of Downtown Sounds Music Store in Northampton, and I'm Representing the Business Improvement District uh, is on this um, seat. And, uh, I've been uh, getting old and one of the senior merchants in downtown. There's very few who have been there longer than me. Thanks. <coughs> I'm Andrew Crystal. I'm with O'Connell Development Group, a real estate uh, development company. I think I'm here representing the real estate segment. Um, I'm also president of the Academy of Music and um, served on the planning board in Northampton for about 12 years. Uh, Jim Neal, I'm the marketing director for Iron Horse Entertainment. Um, I grew up around here, Amherst, UMass, and then I went away for 15 years to Boston and Los Angeles to work in the music business and radio and at record companies. And I came back here 10 years ago, worked at Faces for a while, and various other businesses on the street before I finally connected with my job and got back on track in the music business again in 2006. And it's great to be back. Your position at... Uh, it's the marketing director at IHG. Yeah, I was hired as the publicist, and then I just changed the station area, and no one really seemed to care, so I took the marketing director. And I spent the last week answering uh, individually letters complaining about the traffic jam up at Mountain Park. About 200 left to go. Okay. Great. Mr. Vogel? I'm Steve Vogel. Uh, I'm presently retired. I was the founder of Faces. Uh, I'm here uh, representing the retail sector. See. Oh, creative economy. Creative economy, yeah. That was That's what your question was. Yeah. I'm uh, Alex Simon. Uh, some might know me as Xander. Went to school with your son. Um, I uh, grew up here, moved away, and uh, came back about six years ago. I run a uh, marketing agency on State Street, and uh, we're trying to get back involved in the community, so that could be a thing to do. <coughs> I'm involved in the uh, marketing side of things for the committee. Suzanne Beck, I'm the Executive Director of the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce. Go ahead. Uh, Lori Fenlison, I'm the Vice President for Public Affairs at Smith College, and I sit on the Chamber Board. Julie Cowan, I'm a commercial lender with TD Bank. I'm also on the board for the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm a trustee at Clark School, and I'm here representing finance and I'm Bob Bazzi, and I have a healthcare um, benchmarking consulting research company that's uh, King Street. Um, and we have some national offices, and we're we'll representing healthcare. I'm Robert Ross. I'm the past president of Florence Civic Business Association. I'm currently the chair of fundraising at the Florence Civic Business Association. Uh, they don't want you off the board there, even when you're not the president anymore. Uh, the president sits on the board of the Civic Association. Corrine Flippity, so I work in the mayor's office, um, hired by um, Mayor Ford, so this is, I'm happy to say, my third mayor who has asked me to continue. So how's this one doing? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, so again, I want to thank you all for your willingness to serve. Uh, this idea for um, this commission is something that I talked about when I was a candidate uh, for mayor. Um, I really feel like it was an opportunity to put together a group of folks who are working in different sectors of our local economy or are representing business interests in different parts of our city um, to talk about some of the issues of, of, of economic development and really help advise me, help advise the city, um, uh, and 
So I've, there's a brief purpose statement that you all got as part of your package to advise the mayor on economic development policies and strategies guided by the Sustainable Northampton Comprehensive Plan that will expand the tax base, create employment, create a supportive and competitive business environment, market Northampton, and enhance communication with the business community. Um, then there's a list of just a, of, of a few, uh, of several different items that uh, that are sort of a specific focus. Um, you know, obviously business retention, expansion, attraction, um, identifying and promoting industries or sectors or, or businesses that are compatible with Northampton, attracting and supporting new business startups and entrepreneurs, marketing and tourism, workforce needs, regulatory streamlining. Um, I won't read the entire list, but that kind of gives you a flavor of the kinds of topics that I would love to get your broad and diverse input on as we move along. And, and, uh, and because this is sort of new, I think we'll sort of try to structure it as we go and figure out what are the topics, what are the issues that I want to talk about and bring forward to the commission to discuss. Um, I did put on the agenda for today um, a couple of items, and I thought we just it's, it's sort of a good starting point. I, I mentioned in the description the Sustainable Northampton Plan, and there's a specific section of that plan that focuses on economic development. That is sort of the cur most current um, sort of blueprint or document for the city's economic development uh, goals and strategies. And that was done a few years ago as part of our overall comprehensive plan. Um, so I think that can, can be a guiding document. It, it may be something that uh, you know, we can look at. It can also be something we may uh, want to uh, build upon or update or add uh, factors to it that, that may not have been considered when this was done a few years ago. I thought it would be helpful um, just to sort of set that table. Uh, our director of uh, uh, planning and development, Wayne Fiden, is here, who has sort of uh, guided the overall creation of the, of the plan. And I thought I would ask him to just give a quick overview of Sustainable Northampton, and then sort of do a quick walkthrough of the economic development section of the plan in terms of what we've done, what is yet to be done, et cetera. Uh, so Wayne, if you just want to give a quick, uh, quick overview. Of sure. Let me just pass these around so if you can take one and pass it around. Um, so the Sustainable Northampton Plan is about, it's about four and a half years old. Um, and uh, so in January it's five years old. We're going to come back and do a, you know, a five-year anniversary visit, um, check on, you know, where, you know, how's the plan doing, what do we accomplish, what do we left to accomplish, um, and think about doing a revision for the plan. Uh, revision for the plan. So I pass around, this is, ugly graphics and not complete. But I passed around this so you know what we're thinking about. We're doing this for the entire section of the plan. So what you have is a checklist of all the things in the economic development section of the plan and how we're doing on those areas. Uh, I'm not going to go through them in great detail unless we have questions. But the plan covers everything from energy to land use to economic development to open space. Um, and, and they're all interrelated. So while the mayor passed out the section of economic development, there's not a lot of overlap across the board. So land use section, for example, talks specifically about expanding the land use inventory of land that can be redeveloped. So obviously that shows up in the economic yeah. um, So the areas of this checklist that are most complete are the parts of the operation that, that my shop is responsible for. So things that have to do with land use regulations and changing them, with what the zoning is and creating more inventory for economic development with looking at our economic development processes, with working with property owners and helping permit their sites and taking them through. That's all what I do. The stuff that's weakest in the checklist is the things which Terry Anderson used to do when she was here, which are direct working with businesses, trying to do a business calling program, identifying financial needs and workforce training needs. So in this checklist that I did, those things that frankly I'm less familiar with are going to be in less detail. So you see, Blank lines doesn't mean we haven't done it in the area. It just makes them come less from the area. Um, but basically, the area which we, you know, the, the plan, even though it's five years old, has a lot of changes that come out of it, and a lot of those changes take a lot of community discussion. So it's been a slow process. The areas which we've made the most progress in that affects economic development and so it's changing some of the land use issues. So we've spent the last like, two years working looking at King Street, changing the zoning in King Street. To more attractive from an economic development standpoint. We've done some major expansions of the central business district to the north, south, east, and west, actually all three directions. Um, ex 
expand the footprint of the area. Central Business District has the least amount of regulations that allow it to be redeveloped. Um, we've done a lot of work in our industrial districts. Um, so you know, we've done a lot of those changes that are out there. The vision from the comprehensive plan in terms of land use is basically trying to make things more certain for applicants. Not to give away the store and not to compromise what the city is looking for, but to make things more certain. And so one of the major ways we do that is this thing called a special permit for a lot of development. And a special permit basically means you go out and spend a lot of money, and then you go before a board and ask for permission to do what you want to do, and all that money is at risk. What a lot of the change we're trying to do is to create more clear rules up front and get rid of the lost plot of the special permits. So that people, when they once they invest, they know from reading the rules what they can and can't do, and then they go through the process and are more certain. And we're maybe only a third of the way through changing those things. We've done a lot of it in industrial districts and downtown and in the street. Um, so that, that area made a lot of progress. The other big air thing that came out of the plan, is, didn't just come out of the plan, we've been working on it for a long time, is increasing the inventory of land that's available at economic development. Um, and so that's the, the expansion of downtown, that's working at the state hospital. Um, business park was sort of put on hold while the state hospital went forward, the feeling was the market wouldn't absorb both sites for it to come back to this part. Um, we've been working with Lane Construction, redeveloping their property, all the pain around it. So getting that inventory going forward. Um, I can do more detail, but that's a quick overview. No, I think that's helpful, and, and then I was going to open it up for, just for general discussion to folks who had a chance to look at it. I know, Suzanne, you were part of the working group that, that worked on this section of the plan. Other people who want to kind of chime in or make comments about their first impression, just of having seen what it looks like. And, um, again, just keep in mind this is part of a larger sort of master planning document. Um, and so one of the one of the thoughts I've had is obviously this is good stuff in there, but I also have, have felt like it, it would be helpful to have sort of a standalone or, or be able to put a take out or put aside sort of a Clear, or more sort of a clear, concise sort of strategy and set of goals that we want to work on um, uh, going forward. So that may be part of what we try to develop in this group or bounce ideas off to you about developing is, again, sort of a clearer sense of what that is. The plan, um, it was developed with an, a lot of public input and the, it was in, intentional in that most of that input is recorded somewhere in the document. And there just, it, there wasn't as much emphasis on prioritizing as there probably could have been, although there are priorities that are identified. But the, the short list of, you know, what to focus on I think would be really helpful. And this group could be, you know, good advisors, I think, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just one more comment. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I, was, I was just going to say my suggestion would be to separate planning versus economic development. Because they're just totally, I mean, you can separate the two. Yeah. And then based on just the economic development, we prioritize needs and attention. You had a follow up one. Well, yeah, the other thing you might want to think about is the, the plan has a lot of specific actions and, and objectives, uh, which is sort of the way I summarize this. The plan also talked about creating a lot of metrics and how we measure not just the actions, but are the actions really giving us what we want. I have to say that's something we haven't done that much of. So I can't really tell you, I can tell you all the actions we've taken towards creating jobs, but we don't necessarily have a great inventory of saying how many jobs do we have. And so you may want to think about what are the metrics that are really capturable. I think one of the things we grappled with is when the plan was created, it, created, it identified the metrics we'd like to have, but it didn't necessarily look at which data were easy to collect. And to some extent, we can only collect the metrics and things that somebody else is already collecting that data for. Us. So, so as you look ahead now, what are the biggest challenges? You know, you see, and I see a lot of things not done, and you know, some of the stuff I'm aware of, and others just because I'm not involved as much. But if you were to look ahead for the next year uh, from an economic development perspective, what would you say the biggest challenges are that, that we face? Well, for me, and I'll talk about three things, and I'm sure a lot of things as well, but on the land use side of things, we creating inventory. Um, I think we've done in some ways some of the low-hanging fruit with this less controversial. So a lot of things which we need to do, which are identified in the plan, are going to involve a lot of public discussion and debate for doing it. So 
that's an area where I hope you're all involved with, with part of that discussion. Um, second one for me is this, this land inventory. We've done, in some ways, create the land inventory so we have land that looks like it's ready, but the reality is it's not really ready. You know, so I'm working with land construction on their site. And you know, a quick and dirty estimate is we think you, the, the project can create about 88 jobs, about $50,000 a year in taxes, um, and, and a substantial private investment, but it needs about $1.2 million in infrastructure. And I don't, I don't think the market's going to drive that infrastructure or all that infrastructure. So thinking about those sorts of investments to make sites that we say are ready, to make them truly ready for going forward. Um, and then the third, which is the area that frankly is less, the area I haven't so much been involved with, but thinking about what are the, what are the non-financial things which are needed for the private sector of town, whether it's workforce development, whether it's making sure that transit is lined up, all those sorts of services that they're necessary. No, I, I think I, I mean, as I learn more about um, you know, some of the initiatives, that would give me some, some sense. You start talking about transportation and where's the initiative, where's the, how does the transportation tie into it, you know, what are the other kinds of infrastructure, new pieces, um, fiber optics, you know, are we, are we set for you know, more high-tech groups coming in here in all the city or the certain sections that are, I'm assuming up near whatever Paul Morgan's called now, um, it's probably strong in fiber optics only because they're up there. Um, there may be other areas that we need to do more in. I think the other, um, you know, one of the other pieces that I was uh, under the strategies and actions, there was a, a discussion about different sectors, emerging sectors. I don't know if we may want to try to get an update on, on those and also see if that list, if there's other uh, sectors that we didn't, that may not have existed five years ago. We've got a strong group of, of, um, of entrepreneurs that, uh, that are sort of coalescing here in the Valley. There's a group of, um, I may actually have come and address this body, uh, which is Clip Workspace, uh, which is a, a, a work share uh, group of, of small entrepreneurs that are, you know, some of them have one or two or three different business ideas going at a time, and they're sharing workspace and really trying to uh, create companies spin them off and they and there's a real sense of wanting to stay in Northampton and locate in Northampton. So there's uh, where are they yeah I meant they were looking for space. Where are they now? Mm -hmm. They're over in, on Hampton Avenue uh, in the first floor of that uh, of that building. Um, I'm trying to think it's behind Sylvester's and I don't can't think of the address off the top of my head. It's it's um, Hampton Court. Hampton Court. Hampton Court, excuse me, yeah Hampton Court. Um, uh, they're on the in one of the first floor suites there. They were in another space. They just moved to this space, but they're looking for more space in the city. Um, and, and, and so that's the kind of uh, stuff I like to try to identify and encourage and, and figure out what are the tools we can provide them with uh, to make that happen. Do you have an inventory of space available? We do have an inventory of space. Uh, it, obviously, it's something we have to look at and make sure it's still up to date. But we do have a, a site inventory. But it's as you know, it needs constant tending and it needs to be updated. And marketing. And marketing, exactly. So, do you want to maybe? Um, uh, well, let's let's finish up this piece and then we can um, we can go on. So that's I mean that's this is the document that you know, one of the key documents that we have now that kind of focuses on economic development. I think one of the goals I'd like to have um, uh, would be to sort of be able to say somewhat succinctly and briefly, like this is our, this is, you know, this is Northampton strategy for the next, you know, five or ten years, and these are the kinds of things we really want to focus in on, and these are the mm -hmm. types of, um, types of businesses that we, we want to market ourselves to and go out and recruit, um, and, and uh, so that's, when I look at this document, I think it's very helpful, again, we try to put out all the different issues through that comprehensive plan, and, and then, then, of course, there's the other part of it, which is all the built-in conflicts, uh, or potential conflicts that you read at the back, which is where some of these different things kind of butt up against each other. Um, but I, I would love to be able to have, to really be able to clearly articulate what, uh, what it is the city's strategies and goals are uh, around trying to you know, retrain, retain businesses, but also attract new businesses and provide them um, 
with, with what they need to be successful here. Uh, which is kind of a segue. Are there any other comments about the Sustainable North Hampton Plan? And I think we'll, um, we'll continue to kind of uh, work through this. We may pull out some sections as we go along and do a focus on them and, and try to edit. But I wanted to just sort of have it, give it to you to have it and to sort of have an open conversation about it. As we, as we try to move forward through this. Are there any other questions or comments about the plan or about this, what you see in here or any of the items in here? I noticed the chart school up on here as a, um, as a resource. Is it the VA hospital? The VA hospital at Blue Deck and Smith College, but it's really in the room. It's a chart school, which is actually a changing thing right now. Yeah. Which is uh, important. Mm -hmm. Things that are happening. It may be referenced on your like, education section of the document. That could be the reason for that. Um, again, this is just a, a few page snapshot of the entire document. So um, we, can, we can check on that. So sort of a segue, the other issue that I wanted to talk about at this initial meeting was, the, uh, was uh, an economic development staff person for the city. Um, the city dating back to um, Mayor Higgins first term uh, created a position to sort of focus on and coordinate economic development issues. That was actually Terry Anderson was that first person. Um, the job uh, changed slightly a few years ago when there was a shift in terms of where the position was located, but essentially the, the thrust of having a point person for the city that could be um, you know, working on that inventory that you talked about, being the kind of a contact point for the city, um, being uh, involved in some of the, not only the local, but the regional, the statewide efforts, being somebody that can be looking for funding opportunities, for grants, for, um, and, and also being somebody that can uh, work on marketing the city and be a contact point for businesses and entrepreneurs that are trying to contact us. So in my budget for this fiscal year, um, Coming, I've, I've uh, reserved in the budget um, funding for uh, the recreation of that position in the mayor's office as an economic development coordinator uh, for the city. Um, and one of the pieces I was hoping to get some guidance on is what you think that position should look like. Um, if there are aspects of the position as as it was in the past that maybe could be improved or changed. If there are things that are that are missing that you need to add. So I, I gave you, in the packet that we sent out, copies of what that prior economic development <coughs> coordinator job description looked like. And then I also included with it samples of some other recent job descriptions for the same position from some other communities. Somerville just recently went out uh, looking for a person to do this role. Gardner a few years ago. Um, you'll see Arlington, which is a town, but it's a large town, maybe as big as or bigger than Northampton. Um, and then I picked a couple of examples from out of state, uh, uh, Roanoke, Virginia, um, and, I, and, uh, and Delaware, Ohio. They were just sort of random from a big group of them, but mainly wanted to give you a flavor of what that, um, of what that position looks like in different municipalities, and then try to just get your input on uh, First, for some of you who had experience working with the person in this position, the importance of it, what, what are the things that um, we should be focusing on, and, uh, and if there are aspects of the job description, or if there's another job description that looks better than the one we were working with, for example, that would be helpful to hear as well as we try to attract a really strong person to take on this role. Um, so I don't know, did you want to comment on it and well, maybe talk about your experience doing I can job? tell you what happened in, in Greenfield. It was the first time they ever had that position, a high that position. And one of the things that um, I give Mayor Forge a lot of credit for is she did not want a politician. And I am not a politician. I'm as anti-PC as you can get. But what she did, which I thought was very smart, was she brought a business person in. And not just a business person, but she brought a salesperson in. I've been a vice president of sales for many companies, including Lotus. I, I went very, very big divisional Lotus. And when I came out here to retire, which I still haven't done, keep flunking the time enough. Um, but one of the smart things she did was she wanted somebody who could speak business to these people. They don't want to hear politicians. They don't want to hear, you know, uh, 
blah, blah. But they want a business person who can sit down and negotiate and do contracts and sell the, sell the city and market the city and what do you have to offer and what's in it for me and benefits, not features, and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, there's so many things that are hard to put on paper. You know, but it's a it's an acumen that goes in there. I sat with the governor on many of his task force. I sat with the Western Mass Economic Development Committee. I was constantly traveling. I was in different cities and towns. Every time I heard a company was coming into town, I went out and got Walmart and brought them here for Greenfield. That's the big box that they keep talking about Greenfield. It's Walmart. That's the only one that wants it. But I went out and met them and brought them in. And I went to Kohl's and brought them in. And I went to you know, the 99 in Woburn, and I brought the guys from the restaurant out to see, I mean, it, you have to pull people out here, because they're not going to come out here. You know, Western Mass is Western Mass, and it doesn't exist to a lot of people. So it's a really a sales position to go get these people, find them, and drag them out here to see what you've got. And so we opened a Hampton Inn, and we opened a 99, and we opened, you know, we brought in, like I said, $15 million in new tax revenue, because you, you drag them out here. I think that's a big, big part of the job. It's marketing and sales. Other folks want to comment um, on what? Um, because it, to me, the, you can put all the, you can create a great job description, but the key thing is to find the right person exactly. to fill that job. And um, I would recommend that when you, um, <coughs> when you get ready to interview people, that you. Pick two or three people from this committee that can help you with the interview process and can can spot somebody who has. I really you need both the entrepreneurial kind of um, bent, but you also need somebody who understands politics and who understands how to how to excuse me how to navigate around in the city hall because it's you, and this person has to do both things. But if but um, I. Somebody, people on the, I'm, I certainly would recommend that you be one of them because you've had the job before and you can uh, um, identif you hopefully can identify, hopefully identify the, yeah, but you can't learn that. Hopefully you'll be able to identify yeah. somebody who has the kind of uh, smarts that the job needs. And, and somebody else on this committee who's had the experience of doing a lot of interviewing and a lot of hiring, if you had two or three people from this committee to go to that interview, that's a lot more important than coming up with the right job description. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to just go around on this? Andy, did you want to add something to this? Um, I think someone that is experienced and has some success in grant identification and, and successful grant awards uh, is important, and I think that the person should, we should see that person as um, an advocate and maybe a liaison with planning department and other city agencies that uh, any business coming in or developer coming in is going to have to deal with. I think that's an important role for the thing. You would you would the Kano out of Hoyo? So. Well, sure, please. I was just thinking about just your experience your company's experiences, because you're pretty much throughout New England. So you probably have seen, gone into places and you realize, oh, we need some tax credits or we need some you know, outside funds. I mean, is there something in this position that, um, that needs to have a knowledge base of other revenue streams that could come in to, to supplement the new business coming in? Absolutely. That, that's the, the grants and the funding sources I was referring to. Yeah. There are lots of uh, opportunities out there. We need someone that can identify them and help the private sector folks who want to come in right. accomplish getting those grants and those low interest loans and other funding sources. Because that's, for a lot of the projects that happen now, that's the key. Mm -hmm. They just don't work on the private sector anymore. There's got to be some public support. Right. To, to, to you have to know how to get things. through the TIF system. TIF is the tax income finance system that the state does and the city does this much, and they only care about this much because they want the state piece. So they have to understand how to work the TIF system. So did you have any specific experience, or just sort of talk about any experiences you've had in different communities where, you know, where have you had dealings with people that are sort of an economic development person in other communities other than? 
type work. Yeah, we've, I've had lots of them when we developed the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield. Their economic development director was very good at what he did, uh, was very well connected with the state, which was important, and was able to identify a lot of those fund resources. Oftentimes it's the city person, that economic development director, who is the initial contact and the one really negotiating on behalf of a project that may involve the private sector as well. But a lot of the money flows through the public sector to support and underwrite private projects. And I've been in a lot of cities where the person was not especially I think Marlene put it well, it's got to be a business oriented person. Someone that understands the, the challenges of business and can help navigate, I think, for um, a person or a company thinking about it, making a major investment in the city, help navigate through some of the um, streamlined regulations that we've got. And similar to, to what Andy said, I, I think it's important that you have someone that's well-versed in tax increment financing and uh, any sort of tax credit, both state and federal, never mind what we can offer on a local basis, so that there's a comprehensive package where, okay, locally we can offer you, hopefully, an expedited uh, permitting or, or zoning, you know, review, and in the meantime, have you considered this, so that the economic development coordinator is looked at as a resource, and my experience with customers has been mixed where sometimes the economic development coordinator is not a person that facilitates the process, that can actually be a hurdle. And the politics definitely play a huge part in that. So I would hope that we have someone in this role that has the savvy to navigate the different personalities and different agencies that are involved with a particular project but that also is looking at, or keeping the eyes on the prize, that bringing in a company or providing an environment where a business wants to expand, regardless of the type of business, that's really what's key to me, is making sure that they understand we need to figure out a way to get it done if it's something that fits in with, with what we want. The other side of it is a tough skin, very thick skin. Very thick skin because you're going to bring a business in, no matter who you bring in, there's going to be a facet of people who hate you, who will hate you for doing it. So it's a it's a thick skin position. You, know, you can't you can't have your feelings hurt. You just can't get upset because every time you turn around, and somebody somebody doesn't like what you're doing. So. Um, I want to agree with Joe that. It, what really matters is the person that we select and find, but the job description is not incidental, I think. I think it's important to get that right. And if I look at the one for the, uh, the position that Terry held, um, a lot of it is, is it's framed very passively. It's a person who receives uh, interest for the city, um, a lot of policy and committee work kind of burdened by that, and there's not a real focus on business attraction. And you see that in the other ones right up front. It is the first thing there. And I think looking at the duties and kind of flipping them to a more proactive attraction thing is you know, important. Yeah, almost an ambassador of sorts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I didn't, the Roanoke one was actually like this color, you know, and there, I didn't even include the, the cover piece to it, but it was this you know, very flashy cover. I tried not to look at the photos, because um, they were in black and white anyhow, but yeah. the text on, the, on that one in the ensemble um, one, it's more, more alive. It's like it sold the job, like as a job you wanted. You instead of like, oh, a job in government. This is good. Yeah. It's the way one, the Northampton one reads it in a lot of ways. Instead of being a, a cheerleader or somebody that's really going to make things happen. It doesn't convey the character of the town. The person, yeah, the person who has this job really has to be a booster for Northampton and a can-do type of person. And the truth is, not one person can do this job. It's really a three-person job. So different people are going to do the job differently. You know, somebody's somebody's going to love the grants, and they're going to the, the applicant. That applicant is going to put themselves into the grants, and somebody else is going to love talking to people. So it's really going to be harder. For us. We have to decide which things we want paid more attention to this time, because it's going to be hard for anybody to do all those well, we jobs. We have a grant writer. Because this person is going to be a grants writer. Various departments do work on on grants. You know, whether it's you know. 
DPW focuses on grants for that department. I think if you put that in this job, being a grant writer, you're going to lose at least 50% of your time. Because mm -hmm. that's, and I'm not a grant writer, and I never have been, nor do I want to be. But from what I understand, it's a, it's a pretty specialized skill to be able to write a grant. Yeah. And to have this person be in charge of that or be a grant writer, because they could work with the grant writers and know what's going on, but I don't think, in my own opinion, I don't think you want this person to write grants. Because I can tell you, it takes, it's a seven day a week out there, I mean, my cell phone was on seven days a week, 24 seven, because developers don't stop. They don't work Monday through Friday. Developers work Saturdays and Sundays, and I can tell you I was on vacation on the Cape, and my cell phone would ring, and it would be somebody saying, okay, we're ready to do the deal, and tell me about the building again, and you're doing it. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a nine to five, and, and, and you probably speak better to that. Development is not a nine to five job. These guys are, like I said, they're seven days a week. They're midnight. I mean, I remember getting a phone call at seven o'clock on a Sunday morning from the guy who was building the 99. We talked to him for an hour because that's what he wants. You won't put that in the job. Well, I'm just saying. So <laughs> that's part of you know again, you know, be proactive, and it's that kind of yeah. a job. It is that kind of a job. So but definitely to that so point, unburdening some of the committee work, if it were about continuing that off the plate, might be a good idea. Exactly. It's not a planner position. I think Terry was a planner. <laughs> I think she was. She started as a planner, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and they moved her into this position. Well, she was her a planner training was a planner. Yeah. yeah, I think that was her background for training, and it's it's not easy to put a planner into this. Although it's interesting, the Somerville job description says someone should have a planning degree to come into this. I know, which is really interesting. Yeah. This. Well, I, you know, on the other hand, the lion's share of the responsibility and the focus is going to be on what's here already, mm -hmm. right. and and that is, you know, that's the nature of how all communities grow is mostly it's it's from within and we don't have a lot of land that's you know ready to go or in any other kind of condition and one of the strengths of the job um, as I've worked with the, the uh, coordinator here is having the ability to know what the grant sources are and then providing that that backup support like the fairgrounds is a good example of a project where um, Terry in her job there, wrote a lot of grants on behalf of the city, really, but they were for the fairgrounds project. And it would it'd be interesting to think about other ways to get that done. Um, but in this case, it was a critical. Uh, it was critical to the project that she'd be able and have the have the time to do that kind of thing. For me, I think one of the most important um, aspects of the success of this job is going to be to be really clear about the job's authority within and support within, you know, the city structure. I think that there's, um, that person can be out in the community and with, with that kind of title of, you know, we're really looking for business and looking to help business and to be able to back it up when the question came up or the request came up, I think is really very important. So the idea of working with other city department heads and having that ability to kind of get everybody on the same page is, um, that's a skill. And it's, uh, it's a critical one, I think, for, for someone that's really not in the position to make much happen on their own, but is always going to be relying on other, what, other people at City Hall or developer or whomever, um, or state officials or what have you, to get it done. So I think that's um, really important. And he, just my last comment. Um, Northampton does not have a great reputation for a place to develop. So that coming into the position, the person has the job to, um, you know, define that accurately rather than, you know, as by perception. Because the reason that people, someone will give you for why it has a bad re reputation or a difficult <coughs> reputation is going to be different depending on who you're talking to. But to be able to overcome that uh, perception and really, you know, Put it out, put it to people straight in terms of how much the city wants that commercial development and, and how much the city can help with other partners, obviously, is also important. I, I, I can honestly tell you, when working with the state, state level, there isn't an economic development person in any city or, or whatever that doesn't say that comment. Our city is awful to come to. Nobody wants to come here with a bad reputation. Everybody says that. Yeah, so it's, so it's yeah, it is what it is. It's already funny because Greenfield said it, and then I was uh, working with some people in Hadley. They said it. Everybody says the same thing. Our boards make it impossible for people to come here. It's, 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 it's
it's so it makes that yeah. position that much more important yeah. to really convey what is true as yeah. opposed to what and yeah. you know as opposed to what people think is true. And it, it may have been a little different in Greenfield, but I, I don't agree. I don't think we want an economic development director to be a deal maker. I think they should be a facilitator. There's a deal to be made. Inevitably, it's the mayor. No matter what the economic development person says, if you're looking for concessions or something, it's going to be the mayor's decision. So supporting what Suzanne said, I think as a, a facilitator, uh, and again, you know, business attraction is important, but I think what's more important for us is business retention. Um, and we do have a reputation for being not the easiest place to develop. That isn't true everywhere. There's a lot of places that are uh, very welcoming. Um, so having someone that can advocate on behalf of someone that wants to spend private dollars in our city, I think is critical. They've got access directly to the mayor, and I think having them report to you as this proposes in the job description is important, but um, they need to have a good working relationship with, with planning and DPW. Those are two city agencies that you're going to end up dealing with if you're doing new development, if, if that's what we're looking for. Alex, I, I, yeah, I think it's important. I think, I think the structure on the back end has to be able to support, if you look at it as a sales position, you know, if you do sales, you need to have a team on the inside that actually can sell the product once it comes to the table. I think that's a really important point. Without it, they're left out on the island. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that I think that the, just from what I'm hearing, that the, the title seems like it might want to be looked at a little bit about what that actually means. The coordinator carries a connotation of what that sort of entails of a communicating back and forth. You know, is the person actually is able to go out and close deals and actually get business? I think it's important to empower them. That's why we changed it to director, not the wrong and, and some of the other, the other descriptions actually use that in different ways. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that makes a difference when you go and talk to somebody. They don't want to talk to you they will talk to right. the director. Yeah. So yeah. Right. who do I, who do I talk about? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, it may just be some of our you know, nomenclature here. But we, have, we have directors of departments. And so this position had become director, but when it was actually a standalone city department, but that's now changing. So you know, the coordinator piece could, is, you know, Change the chat or about. Mm -hmm. um, other thoughts about that? Um, how about on, on you know the marketing piece of it? And the, you know, in terms of, um, I think one of the things I, I would want to see happen is uh, is really a focus on you know, a lot of things are now web based. And, uh, you know, we have a um, we have a lot of information on our website, but I, I think one of the focuses might be on this person's how to make that easier to navigate, how to be able to, you know, someone from California that wants to find out about Northampton can quickly get on our site, figure out where the business section is, and really begin to plug into stuff. I mean, we have a lot of that information on there now, but whether it's user-friendly or not, I think that's going to be another. Yeah, I think, it, I think initially, I think it would, it would just spend more time focusing solely on that as an initiative. I think on the business from the outside looking in, I'd I feel more confident saying that the you're committed to talking to me to win. Mm -hmm. As opposed to sort of burying that deep inside the city message. Yeah. yeah. That's just first blush. I never have to look at it. It was brought up before, and I don't know if there's a way to have a site on the wiki site where I actually can sell um, a realtor or anyone, even some guy walking down the street go, how come that store president hasn't rented? And they could put it up on the site so that it was the, the landing site was always getting pumped up. One person monitors, lots of people paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. How about in terms of um, from an existing business perspective, um, folks who have existing businesses or are already working in, 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 in our community, which many of you are, what are the things you would want to see in terms of disposition and in the area of support and retention and um, uh, outreach and those kinds? That's obviously a big, you know, we're, we're, we do have, a, I, I believe we have a really strong, you know, business center here in, in, in the community and obviously a strong downtown and some really strong um, sectors. And so having this person 
uh, not just looking outward, but also not losing sight of what we have here and, and maintaining that. Do you have any thoughts about that, Steve? About or not at this point. Okay. I have thoughts. Well, any other thoughts you have? No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> How does it correlate with the Chamber of Commerce that exists currently? Well, let's ask the executive. I mean, it's, it's given that it's like the, the existing businesses are sort of within the purview of the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it like a, a dovetail kind of a thing? Do they work in tandem, or is it a different mission? Um, just the creating and maintaining a, a healthy, supportive environment like the BID does. Um, you know, where do those jobs intersect? Where do they conflict if they do? Well, we... Um the chamber has taken the approach of looking at the city in general and the economic de development quarter in particular as a partnership opportunity. We had a great program that we've talked about, um, a business visit program where we went out, Terry and I were the staff leads on it, and then we set up a meeting every, um, it was every week, it was um, a little backbreaking from that perspective, but every week with a business and we brought a member of the city council and or the mayor a member of the chamber's board, so there were four of us usually, and just kind of talked about the business and its operations and what was easy, what was difficult, what was the forecast, what was, these were all held in confidence, but it was a really, I was thinking about this group as potentially a, um, a source of, of people if we wanted to do that together again uh, with the program, but it was incredible the insights that came out of those meetings and the economic development coordinator often they had to do with a state regulation that was you know difficult for x y or z reasons usually the public sector was called upon if you will to help and the coordinator was li the liaison for between the business and whatever the agency was that needed to be um, talked to talked with um, but it also gave the members of the public sector a deeper understanding of you know, what business needs to operate and why some things are difficult and some things make it easier. Um, Terry served as a member of our Economic Development Committee, which again was, it was the whole idea of having the city at the table for those discussions and often what we have taken on as a chamber has been um, led by or, or in, introduced to us by the city's economic development coordinator or the mayor. So, and the, the, there is a, the chamber is a membership organization of businesses. I mean, there's right. a lot of businesses that aren't going to join the chamber right. under any circumstances. So having the public, you know, the, the public sector representative for business is important because you want the entire business community to feel like they have a representative. And the chamber can only do that to, the, to a certain extent. And um, it, so it helps when both sectors are kind of be playing that role, and particularly when they're working well together. Right, and, and um, also somebody in this job should know the town and be able to understand, not just to be the salesperson, because if you're, if you're thinking of coming to this town, you don't want to talk to the realtor, you want to talk to the business people that are already here. Like, what's it like working in this town? You know, to get past the salesperson, <coughs> what's it like when you move into a neighborhood? You talk to the, to the neighbors, not the realtor. But um, the person should obviously be somebody who is downtown and knows what's happening and knows the concerns of, of the, the businesses, whether it's retailers with storefronts or whether it's a concert promoter. Like, what's actually happening? What's the climate? What is there too much of? What is there not enough of? What would be complementary businesses? What would kill us? You know, what would, what would enhance what's actually here? Somebody that gets the formula and the sort of the synergy of what's happening, as opposed to someone who's looking to close sales for the short term. What do you think that Robert is going to ask you about this in terms of Florence? And, and, Interesting. Uh, you said that, and I think but then, but they were the Right, I know. <laughs> yeah. Which is why, I, you know, one of the reasons I wanted Florence Civic and Business to be part of this discussion is that, because, you know, you obviously have the downtown in Florence and there's established businesses up there, and, and sometimes the perception that they're not paid attention to by City Hall or downtown, and, 
Sometimes they like that. It's they, exactly. Some people want to feel if they don't bother downtown, they won't bother us. Yeah. Can I just jump in with a with an apology? I have to leave. It's my actually first wedding anniversary tonight, and uh, mm. I promised I would be home. Okay. <laughs> right. Thank, you. Thank you. Happy anniversary. I, I did, I look forward to, to the next time. I neglected to mention at the outset that Patrick Phillips, who's one of our members, couldn't be here tonight because of a conflict. He's um, vice president of Phillips Manufacturing, which is out on Route 10, one of our, our manufacturing sector. But just to follow on, what's, what your, is your sense of, of in terms of um, you know, businesses in and around downtown Florence, what, what the perception is in terms of what the city could be doing? I, mean, I, I participate. I, I um, I've been doing continuing the tradition of having a monthly lunch with your, <coughs> your board um, to, to be able to kind of hear about some of the specific challenges and projects and things that are happening in Florence, but, but sort of beyond that in terms of outreach. And I think that's great. It's been helpful. <coughs> right? I think the economic development coordinator who could do the same, the same sort of outreach. And I would tell you that in my 10 years of being on the um, Civic Association, I've become a very young. Sorry, she threw up hurdles more than <coughs> actually having a can do attitude. Yeah, we can work that out. That's what she does. She wasn't as helpful as her. Thank you. 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 Thank you spend more more time trying to get refined quickly. You get excited that oh my god, tax rate! Break. You realize that it costs you twenty thousand dollars to get a ten thousand dollar tax break, and you're using bankrupt <coughs> business before you get up and running. So that's something that has to be remembered. That, and the off the whoever runs this department has to remember that they don't just work for ninety nine. Right. Yeah. That's right. They work for the city. They work for the city. They work for all those other little guys who are trying really really hard to make a living. And it's, it's, it's an interesting position because it's a little bit of everything. It's a cheerleader, it's you know, protecting your city, it's you want to bring business in, but you don't want to hurt what's already here, you want to help the tax base. I don't you think want, you're I mean, a deal maker, just... but I think you have to be a really good negotiator. Oh, yeah. I think you may. You need to like keep this person in this room and say, yeah, I'm working for you. And then you go That's talk right. to David. David, this is a great thing. we got to make right. this happen somehow. Right. But not the, necessarily the definitive word on making, yeah. making a deal. Yeah. Well, one of the, one, I do a lot of sales training. And have, one of the things I tell them all the time is you have to be civil. I don't know if you remember that movie. But you, you've got to have 20 different personalities because you're dealing with. And the same <coughs> day, you're dealing with 20 different people. And they all want to be dealt with a different way, including the town, because that's your primary you know, goal is to protect right. the town. It's the same time you're a trustee of the town. That's right. I mean, some of the things you brought into Greenfield, I think a lot of people around the table would be too excited. I have to speak, but, but Greenfield needed it. <laughs> yes. They needed it. They, you know, I mean, they're desperate for a big box store or something. Or, you know, they're, they're, it's a whole different, you know, I mean, I have Olive Garden, the, whatever. I would never bring an Olive Garden to Northampton. But Greenfield would kill for, you know. So it's, it's a whole different, you know, you're 20 minutes up the road. They're, it's a different world altogether. Are, are there parameters here, you know, where, you know, for this community, you know, we say we're more interested in, in the small business versus, uh, you know, a, a block of big boxes. Mm -hmm. um, is there, is that been established or is it more something that will evolve? Or is there a time? Governed by square foot. I'm just going to say you don't have space for it. Well, part of it's governed by space. Some of it has been done through land use policy. We have, there was a discussion about King Street and the fact that several, several years ago there was zoning enacted to try to prevent big box. Um, it has been since modified a bit to provide more flexibility, but I think um, just, well, just the, the physical characteristics of King Street wouldn't really allow for that to happen. Um, but, but I don't think, I mean, I think that there's been throughout those conversations, there's been an attempt, I think, to try to strike a balance between wanting to obviously attract and, and have, um, not have unused space and attract the business, but also keeping in mind that you have existing businesses and existing restaurants and existing stores and not trying to necessarily compete um, 
include those as well. So that's the, I mean that's part of the balancing act. How involved uh, are you going to be in this? I mean, with, with the role and, and developing the piece of it? Uh, well, I think I, I consider, I, I want to have uh, you know, a hands-on role in the process. I mean, one of the things um, that I think, you know, we were talking about earlier about having, uh, when someone comes into the city, um, it's great you can meet with the director or the coordinator, but, you know, they also want to know that the CEO of the, of the town or the company is, has a personal involvement and will reach out to people and, and talk with people. And so, uh, and you know, and, and I, in a previous life, two careers ago, or one and a half careers ago, was I worked um, uh, for John Olver. I was his economic development director. So that was, I guess I was a director at that point. And so a lot of that, again, was doing many of those same things, but on a more regional, statewide level. And it was meeting with mayors, meeting with town officials, as well as some business folks. But again, I think having, um, you know, when a, when a company or a business or an existing business is having a problem or difficulty, I think they want to know that the mayor is, you know, is, is there and is willing to pick up the phone or have a meeting. Or, <coughs> so I see myself being as hands-on as I can be, given all the other responsibilities. But I. I do know having, since Terry left, and we're trying to kind of keep moving forward some of the initiatives, uh, and I've been really hands-on, that I do need someone um, who can attend the different chamber meetings and can attend and, you know, represent me and the city. Um, it's not something I can do by myself. Uh, so that's, you know, that's sort of the balance that I'd have to strike. In cities where the in my opinion, in cities where the economic development coordinator, director has been affected, is where that person speaks with the voice of the mayor. Um, negotiates, but with the responsibility ultimately lying with the mayor. So whoever is hired into this position needs to have your complete confidence to know that um, while you're juggling many responsibilities, um, you don't want the multiple personalities coming out <laughs> and leading to an overcommitment and an under-delivering. Or the wrong personality at the wrong time. The wrong personality, <laughs> thank you. Uh, because I, I worry that um, if the sense of responsibility lies with the coordinator director, then we run risk of a person out there bringing in or... Uh, Engaging in discussions that are contrary to the desires of the city of, uh, of Northampton, and you're right, Bob. That or Robert, excuse me. That what works for Greenfield isn't necessarily going to work for Absolutely. Northampton. Um, but that isn't to say that we can't learn from what other cities have done. And so another component, in my opinion, that's very important is to make sure that this person can play well with other economic development coordinators because we don't want it to be where we have someone that is seen as uh, enemy number one and trying to poach businesses from the next town over because as we know what when Hadley and Amherst and Northampton are all doing well we all benefit so we just need to be mindful of that in, in figuring out what we want and then assigning the task to go out and solicit that type of business or businesses we want to encourage to relocate as long as they're a complement to what we have in preserving our core business. If, if I can just speak to that in a second, I, I might mis misrepresented exactly what, you, what happens, but that position doesn't go out and say, okay, 99, you're coming here. It, it doesn't work that way. That you get an inventory of land, an inventory of, you know, whether it's empty storefronts or it's actual land to be developed, mm -hmm. and you go out with other towns, and I mean, I was, I was constantly with other towns, and basically find the best fit for the region. And this person may have a better lot than this one does, and you kind of have to share what's out there and who's looking. Because there's only, you know, there could be a dozen players at once that are looking. So basically what you're doing is you're, you know, as much as you're going out and pulling people in, you're also negotiating with other cities and towns and who's got the best parcel. And ultimately, although you get the mayor and the, you know, the other teams involved, it's their decision where they go. So you're on a, you know, basically on a bid list, if you will, 
and you hope that the people that you want to come will. I mean, there were, there were a couple instances where there were some um, actual stores that we wanted to come in. They weren't interested. And the few that we really weren't crazy about coming in, but they were the only ones interested. You know, like we had, the, they had uh, a parcel called the, uh, uh, it was the old tool and dye facility that they haven't been able to develop for 30 years. And no matter how much marketing was done, nobody wanted that piece. It was just a terrible location. And so, you know, you go to, you try something different, eventually you got the arbors to come in, and they built the assisted living facility. So it wasn't the perfect choice, it wasn't exactly what was going to happen, but it got it developed, and they did a lot, you know, so it's, it's not like you go out and say, if a 99, come on in. It's, and I don't, you know, I don't know, if maybe I'm not saying it right, but it's well, a, I didn't take it that okay, way. good, because it's, it's really a big, um, it's a big game, if you will. <laughs> it really is, it's a big game in the region. To see who could do what. Yeah, there is the Economic Development Council of Western Mass. Right. And they, and I actually just signed a memorandum of agreement that's sort of part of the membership of that. Mm -hmm. And one of the principles of that is that you will you will play well with others yeah. and you will <laughs> poach from other people and that you sh we all share the goal that we want to attract business to the region and to Western yeah. Mass so that uh, we don't lose people to other, yeah. to other regions. And, and they do play well together. I mean, yeah. there wasn't any, you know, yeah. Issues that really came up. So, what was your experience, Julie? Like, just give me an anecdote about. You don't have to mention names or towns, but to the extent that you got involved mm -hmm. in, a, in a deal with an economic development staff or or, or a city or. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm not going to mention the municipality, uh, so I'll just talk, mm -hmm. speak to it in, in broad terms. Uh, it's a rather large. Um, former retail building that was to be uh, retrofitted into a mix of retail and office space. And the economic development coordinator was critical in the process in helping to uh, research title, because this is a building that had sat fallow for many, many years, and um, helped coordinate an investment from the not-for-profit and the private sector uh, to come together to create uh, an organization to buy the building, um, to then put money in to renovate the building, and there was tax increment financing, which hadn't been done in that city. Uh, so that uh, has helped that building where it went from fallow to rehab to lease up uh, the Economic Development Coordinator helped with the coordination of the permitting process, both through that city and the state, uh, because there were some national historic tax credits, so there's also federal issues involved. So that person was the point person for this particular project, and while it wasn't a concurrent, uh, nor was it an expedited permitting process, it, having one person really helped uh, a very complicated process conceptually become very smooth. It, it took uh, from tax title to the first um, tenant being on site. It was 18 months. And while that may not sound like it's a quick turnaround, um, I see raised eyebrows. <laughs> Eddie could speak to that. That's very quick. So that person was spot on. So having the right person and, and speaking with the the authority, that's a big person to get, grab the attention of the various departments within the city to make sure, listen, this is a priority for us because we're putting it back onto the tax uh, rolls. You know, making sure that everybody's looking at, keeping the eyes on the prize, that's, that's huge. So are there other thoughts about this, this piece of it? I think we definitely want to try to work, uh, you know, just as a general principle to get better the kind of language changes that you mentioned in terms of trying to make it more dynamic, maybe uh, you know, put some of the focus on Northampton itself with the description like some other communities have done, and, um, and, uh, and I think sort of go through it and, and try to maybe remove some of the pieces that seem a little too, um, I mean obviously in terms of committee work I would see that person, for example, sitting at this table being part of right. this conversation. So that's not the kind of committee work I want them not to be part of. Right. Um, and uh, and there may be other 
you know, committees, if there's master planning committees or things that happen, like the one that created the Sustainable Northampton Plan, having them be part of that. Um, but I see what you're saying about not wanting to make it sound too much like a just a staffing, staff, yeah. administrative kind of a job. It, it seemed to me just from some of the earlier things that were said that if we had somebody who could find somebody who was bright, um, who could facilitate things, um, you know, uh, well, facilitate companies coming in, but also facilitate things within Northampton. Because I think there's barriers that are here in any community. And as we identify them, that person should be working on trying to uh, help to eliminate the barriers while at the same time trying to get folks to come on the outside. I, I love the marketing piece, you know, because I, I really think the person has to go out there. I mean, for me, I also like the idea of. Um, being aware of all the tax credits and the grants and all these other things that might be available to help facilitate it. You know, having been in this situation looking for buildings for our company, you know, even a small amount would have been the clincher that would have put it over, but there was really no one to come to. I love your idea about the um, the image, you know, in terms of the, you know, the, the, the Roanoke or one of the places that had sort of a really sort of a dynamic kind of presentation, but I think that's how we should be presenting North Um and, and the other part is that actually I would hope this person would be able to pick up quickly if he or she's not from here, is the culture of the community. I, I think that there has to be great respect for what's going on downtown, but I think there has to be great respect for Florence and other areas. And how do we celebrate each of the differences, support them in terms of economic development, while supporting the overall piece? And I think we get the right person in there. I think we have some great efforts. Final thoughts. <clears throat> I don't think we need a sales marketing person at all. Northampton's the envy of every community in the state. I go all over the state and people say, we did a project in the of Westfield and said, we want it to be just like Northampton. So I, I think that companies want to come here because of who Northampton is. I don't think we need to do maybe what Greenfield had to do because they had a very different task to accomplish. Um, but I agree. I think. Facilitating is the key of what this person's going to do. And if you look at the studies, most of the economic growth is not going to be from attracting new companies here. It's going to be from retaining and growing our companies. And in that capacity, so in knowing the community, knowing all the incentives, and knowing all the public funding sources that are available to grow, to, to move your company to a larger location rather than to pick up and leave. You know, Cole Morgan is a perfect example, and they looked all over and wanted to stay here, and really it's to Mike Wall's credit that they're here because he was insistent on staying. Um, but they could have gotten a lot less expensive taxes in other communities, they looked at polio, <clears throat> but they wanted to stay here. And I think that um, identifying those companies, finding out what their issues are when they do want to expand, um, facilitating those. We went through a fairly lengthy process with the planning office and came out with a good result. I think it was a, a negotiation and a compromise from a master plan that evolved and needed to be changed, and, and rec people recognized that. But in that whole process, um, I think your economic development person has to be the one that understands your vision, larger your vision for the city, understands what businesses need to succeed in Northampton, and knows how to work behind closed doors in the mayor's office and the planning office and the DPW and facilitate that growth or that expansion or that new development within the city. And, and the, the, the mm -hmm. financial part with state and federal funding is absolutely critical. Yeah, the other, the other thing, just to piggyback a little bit on this, there's the issue of synergy. We have within Northampton these companies that are national leaders. They're not giant companies, you know, or they're Cobalt may not be giant compared to other kinds of companies, but but they're small companies. So you have, you know, Julie Pope was Market Street Research. Um, she's one of the top researchers in healthcare in hospitals in the country. You have, you know, other companies like us who or another segment of healthcare that has leaders in two or three areas. You start bringing them together, that that then becomes a magnet for other companies like us. You can say, look, we work together with that. And then when you tie that into University of Mass. You know, with some of the resources up there. I just think, I, I do agree with you. Northampton is a, if you want to be someplace, you want to be in Northampton. And as this becomes seen as a greater mecca of certain segments, I think you're going to have people, you know, fighting to get in. It's just that leader, your economic development person, may be the person to pull that off. I, I tend to agree that it's a, it's a mecca and pretty much the end, you know, but I, I, I disagree that it's not a sales position. 
because, I mean, it's, it's easy to turn uh, King Street into the auto mile. I mean, because one dealer will bring another dealer will bring another dealer, but to get it from being the auto mile to bring other kinds of stores and other kinds of, to stretch the downtown down King Street, I think that takes a salesperson that's going to say, look, you know, this is great that you want to move your dealership over here, but we've got three other options that we can look at also. And that was, you got those three other options because this person went out and sold, you know, the area and sold Northampton. And so, I mean, you know, we've got an old Honda dealership that's been empty forever. You know, there's some storefronts that turn over a lot and that, you know, we've got some empty spots. And I think to be a salesperson, we should have the choice of who we want in the town. We should have a choice. It shouldn't just be, oh, thank goodness somebody took the whole Morgan building even though it's going to be in the car dealership. It's, I just think it's, it is partly a sales position too. So we have options as a city. Well, I think you're right. I think somebody doesn't need to win taken out of their sales by the first person they might meet at City Hall by just being a dud and going, because I've, I've heard it. I've, I get out in the world. I travel. I do quite a few trade shows in my business. And, Oh, I tried to do something about them. Forget it. It, it does, you know, that they, they do, yeah, it looks good on paper, but sometimes when you get here, they, oh, they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to do that. So it, it, it is more, there's a, it's maybe not so much the sales, you don't have to be able to finesse things. I was going to say, where's, I, maybe it's in your but where's the direction come from what kinds of businesses or organizations are going to be targeted for this. It's, it's, you know, it's it's the there's instead a, of knowing what's there's a lot of sectors outlined in that plan, just sort of a list of lots of different ones. I do think that may be one of the pieces we focus on is are there you know you were talking about this kind of uh, the synergy of, of companies and maybe that's part of you know trying to identify what are the types of companies that would help build on that synergy and, and what are the different sectors. Um, and then we you know we have we have higher education. And Valley and their ways to target folks around opportunities there and, and bring higher ed in. We've obviously got the cultural economy, um, uh, uh, the creative economy, um, and opportunities there. So I think those are. I think that's maybe one of that's one of the things I'd love to get clarity on going forward. Um, so that again, there's sort of a, a clear strategy that what it is we're, we're doing, so that this person right. knows what it is. Can be very very focused on getting that. That piece gone. I, I think it's going to be ultimately confusing if there's too many things to have to go after, and there's too there's too many little positive synergies mm -hmm. going on. And we create priorities. I mean, there's there's it can be a long list, but we try to identify some priorities. Uh, I, I got to weigh in on this a little bit. Is um, I've never, and I've been doing this for a long time, never dealt with the community that that wooed us as developers to work there. The market's going to determine who wants to come here. Okay. I don't think it's our role to say. We need another dress shop, or we need this kind of restaurant, yeah. or that kind of retail yeah. store. I think um, our job in this this economic development person's job should be to facilitate. They're going to find us, and a lot of them have come either to grow or, or to start businesses. And and as he was saying, if the first response you get is not zoning doesn't allow that, you know you're going to have to get this change or that change. That's going to turn them away, and they're going to look for a, a community that's more receptive and more open arm. Um, but I'm not sure that it should be certainly this committee's role to, or quite frankly anyone's role, to start deciding what sort of stores should be on King Street and what sort of stores shouldn't be. I think the market does that. And I, I know that I was getting down to that level of detail. No, no, but just to Xander's question, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure we're sitting here saying, here are the kind of stores and restaurants and shops and businesses that we'd like to have, because I don't think it works that way. Okay. If I could weigh in on this, a couple of things. I, um, you're sitting on the uh, Citizens Advisory Council for the State Hospital site, um, we had a vision of what the thing was going to look like, and um, uh, recently, we were presented with a plan for Cole Morgan to be here that had absolutely nothing to do with the vision of what the site was going to look like. But when you're doing economic development and when you're when you're dealing in real estate, you have to have your eyes and your ears open for opportunity. And here was this opportunity that came along to mass development to take in Cole Morgan, have the project be an instant success, and. Um, I, for one, um, 
much as as attractive as the idea of the village on the hill was, I, for one, as a member of the CAC, was not about to say, no, um, this isn't what our initial vision was. We, we, and, and I'm not a big fan of defense contractors either, from a uh, personal point of view. But I, but we, it was our responsibility to respond to this opportunity in a way that made sense for the city. And I, I think we did that, and I, I feel, uh, I feel very good about it. And I, and as, and whoever this economic development person is, <clears throat> has to. Um, respond to the kinds of opportunities that come and take advantage of them and be flexible. And, and uh, I know, um, you know there's many, many people in this town and, and uh, I've heard many, many times at various events, oh, there's too many cars, there's, you know, there, um, we need to be more sustainable, we need, well, uh, the automobile is a, is a fact of life in the United States of America and is a, a street that's very well suited to, um, to automobiles, so the idea that, that uh, there's going to be another car dealership on King Street doesn't bother me at all. And I don't, and I, I think um, we have to be, we have to be open to what the opportunities are that come, come in and say, well, as much as I, and I, um, you know, I biked here today, and I went back home today, I love bicycle, I love being on bicycle, but, but if, if the opportunity that comes to King Street is to have car dealers, and we, whoever the, then we have to respond to that, and we have to, um, uh, work with it and be flexible, and, because if, if you're, if the inflexibility is a, is a good way to prevent that. And that goes, I mean, and that goes exactly to Andy's point, that, I mean, the city didn't have a direct role in, in that project, in terms of, you know, there was a, Seller Cole Morgan was trying to sell this building. It no longer it sold the company and kept the building or was left with the building, needed to sell it. And so it was shown to many, 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 I'm sure you probably looked at it with clients. And you know, people did the math, did the economics, and couldn't make it work in terms of having to tear the thing down. And so this was the use that stepped forward that was willing to, to make that where the math worked. So that's what's happening. So you know. We do have to understand the, public, the limitations of the public sector, what we can do. But, but at the same token, I do think it's important that we also have a proactive, be proactive as well, not just reactive. That you know, if someone's leaving or there's a parcel that's vacant, what are we going to do? That we also have to, so it's sort of a balance. Yeah, um, I, I, I think for sure. I think I think the point's very well made that we're in a, we're in a position that a lot of cities don't have. You know, we are we are attractive place to be, but. Um, a couple of different kinds of businesses who really tip the scales and sort of uh, mess with the culture and mess with the synergy we have a little bit too. I do think being proactive is a really important part of it to, a, to an extent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I had, uh, at least for this first initial meeting. And um, again, I want to thank you for your willingness to, to be part of this. And um, you'll probably be hearing from me soon about this position that we're going to try to redo the job description and get it get it out there and maybe ask for some feedback on that again. Do you, have a, do you have a deadline for when you'd like to have this person hired? Uh, well, funding will be in place um, in July with the new city budget that's being adopted. So um, I'd love to get I'd love to get this out there on the streets, you know, soon and, and, and get it out there and begin a process of getting some. You know, summertime, probably over the summertime would be the period uh, to do that. And, and um, it's a position that I would hire, but I, I, I do like the idea of, a, of having a screening committee, of having, again, probably folks from this body be part of a screening committee to help look at and help me look at those applications and um, maybe even do some, some interviews um, before making a final decision. I don't know the city rumors, but is the grade, what, what, what would the grade bring us? Someone at mid-career, someone new? What is your sense of, of the funding? What kind of person could we get for this? For this Looking at our funding relative to other cities and towns, and uh, you know, my sense is it would be someone um, 
you know, uh, sort of at the first half of their career, <laughs> the mid to, you know, I don't, I don't know that we're going to attract somebody um, who's, uh, you know, from a major metropolitan area, um, unless it's a, you know, they're, mo they're, they're moving here Life for change. other reasons, yeah, like, right. or they're you know, here with a, following a spouse or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, uh, you know, the, right, right now, the, uh, Terry's position uh, is paying about sixty thousand a year, so it's not um, uh, that. And that's, so that's before of, benefits. Yes, so that's sort of in, that's sort of the base range that we're talking about. Um, you know, Holyoke just hired someone um, who was fairly new. Um, who is, you know, a very right staff level person, a young sort of his, really his first sort of major position, had held a position with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. That wasn't his first position. Okay. He worked for, um, in Puerto Rico. Okay. He's, over, but he's, um, he's very bright. He's a Princeton grad. Mm -hmm. He's on his way up in the career. He's got a lot of energy and yep. um, he's got some real challenges in front of him. Yeah, I was talking to Ann Burke. Who is, who's you know the EDC, and she was talking about this group of economic development coordinators, and she's been she said there's been a real kind of sea change in the last few years that a lot of folks like like Terry Anderson who've been there for a long long time have turned over, and now there's kind of this new group of sort of younger, more up and coming folks that are in those positions. So I think we'd be Good. sort of joining that those ranks um, in terms of what we do. I mean, uh, obviously keep an open mind and, sure. and see what's available, and I think we'll try to attract the best candidates. You follow his position like There are those things that happen. Yeah. <laughs> and answer more, the right one. Or, you know, I'm sure there may be professor spouses that may be coming to the five college area, so there may be opportunities like that. So, so David, what is your expectation of us other than Consul Taylor? Is it that you want us to what's in front of us, um, take a look at all of these job descriptions and tweak it? Do you, do you want subcommittee you know, sub work? I think if you wanted to give feedback on any of those job descriptions or get, or, or set along, like, this this mm -hmm. is great, you should really have it in ours, I, mean, I think that would be great. I'm not quite sure I want to do subcommittees or start to create those things at this point. Okay. Um, but. But I'm also open to sort of letting this evolve and hearing. I know I was talking to Bob at one point about you had had some thoughts about um, about trying to really focus in on, on goals for this sort of a committee based on the other work you do professionally. And, um, and so that, that kind of, I think this is sort of the first meeting and that I want to sort of continue to hone in. Uh, but I would love to hear feedback in terms of what you think would be, how you could be most useful. Uh, without volunteering specifically for any one task or, or subcommittee, it seems to me that <coughs> we need to figure out what we want out of our economic development coordinator director, mm -hmm. because our work would be an enhancement to that person's work as well as yours. So I think we, that needs to be done first. Mm -hmm. And then it would seem to me that for the things and the sustainable plan that either haven't had traction or need additional work, uh, and th th that's where we can come in and, and enhance it and really push things you know, into the end. Is that kind of five years old? Or right. It's so it may need to be revisited to see what's yeah, appropriate exactly. and yeah. the compo that, those components. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. I mean, I would love if, if, you know, if you would be willing and there, there's other folks, particularly our writers in the group, that wanted to take a look at the job descriptions and, and give any feedback about things that you think are strong or could be strengthened. Or, um, you know, Lori, it sounded like you had some thoughts about specific stuff. So that would be great. That, that would be great. And who would we send that to? I mean, we can send it through Kareen. That would be, that would be the, the person to, to follow that back through. In terms of uh, in terms of schedule and future agenda, um, I, I'm going to try to um, bring stuff forward that may be you know current that's, that maybe the city's working on, and there's issues that are sort of immediate and topical, and then there's more kind of the, the longer term stuff like the sustainable Northampton plan. Um, I'd love to get this uh, at, a, at a next meeting 
um, have these folks from uh, you know, Cliff Workspace possibly come in and talk to the group and talk about some of the issues they're working on. Um, so sort of mix it up and obviously be open to ideas from the commission about things that you think would be good topics to, to talk about as we as we go forward. Um, so that's that's sort of what I'd like to see this this body do. So that, and again, getting back to the the reason for it is so that the city's not sort of in a vacuum trying to do this. <coughs> so we're, we're getting advice from uh, from the community, from the economic development community, and from different sectors of the economy. Um, so we'll be back in touch about setting up another meeting um, and also getting feedback on the job description as we sort of refine that. Great. So thank you all for, for coming. So, so we'll, we'll meet as needed is the idea? I think I think in the early going here, I'd love to try to set up a few regular kind of meetings oh. going forward. Okay. Um, so <coughs> we expect to hear from us about trying to set something up in the next um, month, month and a half. Obviously realizing it's vacation time and that may be challenging, but just to kind of keep some momentum going in the early. And then I think depending on... <coughs> Stuff we're able to accomplish, then, then it may move to a more as needed basis. So. Thank, you. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.